Hotel, live long and prosper. My name is Villa from a band called Him, and uh, here to tell you a, a crazy tour story. Um, there's zillions of them, you know, obviously, but uh, since we've been touring for the past 15 years. But the uh, last thing I really vividly remember was that we played in Tilburg in, uh, in Holland just uh, about two months ago. And, uh, and since I've been working in a sex shop that my daddy owns, uh, a lot of our fans know that. And uh, the first time it ever happened was that there was a couple of girls that actually threw a vibrating, vibrating um, cock on the stage during our set. I was looking at it, I was like, what the hell is that? And then I remember Dave Navarro saying that if you, use, you can actually use the vibrator as, a, as a, like a feedback thing for a guitar. So I picked it up and started working around it with that guitar player. And people were like, what the hell is going on? It was in the in in middle of a song in a jam. And I started using that as a percussion and everything. And, uh, and a couple of days later, you know, all the, all the headlines in, in the Finnish newspapers was like, you know, the, the hymn singers finally lost it completely. He's playing percussion with a vibrator on a gig in Holland. And uh, I didn't actually see that as the funny part, but the fact that I used my own mic as the, you know, um, as the other percussive element. So basically, it would have been great to go back home with genital herpes and saying, and saying to my fiance or my girl, that yeah, there was chicks who threw a used dildo that was still vibrating on stage while we were playing. I used it as a as a per percussion instrument, and from that, I unfortunately got this ugly, ugly STD. That would have even that would have even beat the Ozzy Osbourne's uh, bad story. But uh, I'm still pretty safe. It is in fact a band it from is Finland. It's a band, and nice doing the interview. Yeah. Him are a Finnish band who have been playing together for 17 years. After six albums, they've managed to win cult fans the world over. And just before they took the stage at their recent New Zealand show, we got to find out what the rock and roll lifestyle was like from frontman Vili Vale. I didn't know anything about money or, or cars or chicks or anything, or drugs mm. or alcohol. You know, I was just uh, a big fan of Kiss and Iron Maiden and bands like that, and that's the reason why I started playing music. So. All the uh, all those bonuses happened later on. Yeah, kind of like uh, surprised us. Now I was I was, was travelling past the venue that you're playing at tonight, mm. and uh, I was I was driving to work actually in the morning. It was about mm. seven thirty eight in the morning, and there was about seventy or a hundred people waiting outside for your show. They'd slept overnight. How does that make you feel when you know that there's people waiting outside the venue waiting for you? Very very surreal. It's weird how a song travels. You know, you sit on your bed back home, you know, a zillion miles away, and and uh, write a song and through you know a lot of work and through the production of the song and uh, everything you know after maybe a year and a half the song's done and it, it gets played and it gets into a record store and maybe somebody buys it and in this faraway country mm. remote country as remote as Finland is yeah. in a way uh, that uh, that somebody can really you know fall in love with the song and you know then sing along to it and it's just it's it's surreal <laughs> The group have also formed a well-publicised relationship with Jackass star Bam Margera, who is one of him's biggest fans. How did, how did that come about? Oh, it was a funny thing, you know, when Bam wasn't working so much for the TV stuff, he was skating a lot. Mm. He was skate demos all over the world and he ended up skating in Helsinki. He saw our poster in the record store and bought the album and fell in love with it so much that he actually ended up flying from Philadelphia. America to, to London to see us play our first gig in England mm. and then he came on knocking on our dressing room door after the gig and said hi my name is Ben and I work with MTV and then we gave him beer and chatted for a bit and since that he's been directing videos for us and he's been you know you know he has a lot of hard ground tattoos on him the symbol yeah. of our band and everything and it, it, I'm very glad that it happens in such an organic and natural way. Now I was, I was reading on the internet as well like, you, you type in facts about yourself and your father owned a sex shop is that correct? He still owns a sex shop. So yeah. that's outstanding oh, I'd love my dad to own a sex shop because my dad, my dad used to own a dairy over here and I used to mm -hmm. have to work in the dairy did you used to have to work in the, in the sex shop? Like, oh, the I, did for a, I did for a bit since uh, I dropped out of school when I was about maybe 15, 16, and then uh, I had to help him out a bit as well. It was just weird, you know, I was like 17 or whatever and working in the sex shop at that age, which was fairly weird. You know, couples come in and they ask questions about certain vibrators or whatever, and when you're 17, at least I didn't have the experience of, you know, testing everything <laughs> out, and it was just that, uh, you know, I was blushing there a bit and all that. But, uh, you must be a professional now, though, with your family. Now it's all changed. <laughs> Pleasure hanging out with you, Billy. A pleasure indeed, nice to sir. Nice to meet you, my man. Thank you for coming down here once again. Thank you.